Deloitte has released its latest state of AI in the enterprise, and here's what it has to say. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. In the headlines today, we discussed how Wall Street is kicking off this fall when it comes to attitudes around generative AI, and so it only makes sense that for our first main episode of September, we're looking into AI in the context of the enterprise, and specifically where generative AI sits within companies now, after nearly two years since the launch of ChatGPT. Every quarter, Deloitte releases an update to its state of generative AI in the enterprise report. This latest report that just came out covers the period between May and June of this year. They call it moving from potential to performance and sum up investment is increasing, but the clock is ticking to scale and create value. So let's discuss what their big findings were. Broadly speaking, one of the things that you're starting to see everywhere is that we're moving out of the technology novelty phase of AI adoption. Individuals and organizations are both getting more nuanced and sophisticated in terms of how they're thinking about using generative AI, and along with that is coming more expectation and less doe-eyed interest in anything anyone has to sell them. Unsurprisingly, a big theme for this report is organizations wanting to move beyond pilots and into a phase where generative AI is actually driving real business value inside their companies. Deloitte sets up a bit of a path diverging in the wood analysis. On the one hand, as you'll see, there is a ton of movement shifting from pilots to deeper integrations. But as they also point out, quote, the clock is ticking for organizations to create significant and sustained value through their generative AI initiatives. Promising pilots have led to more investments, escalating expectations and new challenges. During this pivotal phase, C-suites and boards are beginning to look for returns on investment. There is a chance that their interest in generative AI could wane if initiatives don't pay off as much or as soon as expected. It would take a whole episode to discuss why I think that enterprises are largely in a situation where it would be much, much riskier to turn away from experimentation with AI than to accidentally overspend on it. But for now, let's just stick closely with what Deloitte is presenting here. So what is actually going on inside these companies that are testing AI? A couple big blinking banner headlines for me. First, two-thirds of companies are increasing their investments because they've seen strong early value to date. That is an extremely telling statistic that suggests there is much more than just hype going on inside these organizations. What's more, the benefits that people are finding are getting more diverse. On the one hand, improved productivity and efficiency as well as cost reduction are still both the top benefits sought by organizations, as well as those most cited as the most important benefits achieved to date. But importantly, 58% reported they realized a more diverse range of most important benefits, such as increased innovation, improved products and services, or enhanced customer relationships, meaning there's a certain growing sophistication that's not just about ROI measurement. Something that we discuss a lot at Superintelligent is the way in which the AI transformation is proceeding through a sequence of steps. The first step, the low-hanging fruit, if you will, is personal productivity among employees. This is where a ton of the experimentation is happening now. When some individual is just figuring out if their work happens faster, if they integrate ChatGPT with their email writing process, that's sort of this first step. The second phase is all about unlocking new opportunities that weren't possible before. Totally reconsidered ambition, for example, around a marketing campaign, because things that were simply outside the capability set of the participants are now firmly within their grasp. This to me is what this 58% reflects when they see increased innovation, improved products and services. This is more than just personal productivity. It's wider benefit. Then, of course, there's an even higher level stage, which is organization-level transformation. Some organizations have gotten here, but by and large, this remains something for the future. This is all about how we might see organizations redesigned and reimagined from the ground up based on the new capabilities that AI enables. I think where you're likely to see this happen first is actually with entrepreneurs who create totally different types of organizations and model how you can do more with less or much more with the same. And slowly, those types of transformations will find their way into the enterprise as well. In any case, again, two big banner headlines here. Two-thirds of organizations are increasing their investments in Gen AI because they're seeing strong value. And nearly 60% are seeing benefits that are not just about productivity and efficiency or cost reduction, but are about innovation and improved offerings. There is lots of challenge here, though, as well. 70% of the organizations surveyed said that their organization has moved 30% or fewer of their Gen AI experiments into production. In other words, there does seem to be a big scale barrier. Those barriers come in a few varieties. One is around data. 55% of organizations told Deloitte that they're avoiding certain Gen AI use cases because of data-related issues. Some are worried about regulatory uncertainty. Three of the four things holding organizations back from developing and deploying Gen AI tools are risk regulation and governance issues. And then, of course, there's the old chestnut of ROI measurement. 
More than 40% of respondents said that their companies are struggling to define and measure the exact impact of their Gen AI initiatives. And less than half said they're using specific KPIs to measure performance, with many standard measures of success not currently being applied. There is also definitely a broad sense here among these organizations that they do not feel prepared. Only 45% think that they have the appropriate technology infrastructure. Only 37% said that they feel they have the appropriate strategy. Only 23% said they have the right risk and governance systems. And only 20% said they have the right talent. For the sake of this report, Deloitte decided to hone in on two particular areas around data and governance and risk and compliance. The TLDR on the data side is that data has come even more to the fore thanks to generative AI. 75% of organizations surveyed said that they've increased their tech investments around data lifecycle management. Data-related concerns are frequently cited as holding back Gen AI implementations. And when it comes to risks and regulation, as we said, these are meaningful hindrances as well. And this is me editorializing a little bit, but likely to get more so, especially as the U.S. starts to deploy state-by-state type legislation, like SB 1047 if it gets signed by Governor Gavin Newsom in California, as opposed to federal regulations, which might be a little bit clearer. Now, of course, even beyond these specific risks, there was never going to be a period of attempting to move from pilots to scale, where the challenges of measurement weren't going to start to become a big issue as well. The story that this report tells is a lot of experimentation around AI ROI tracking. 48% of those surveyed have used specific KPIs for evaluating Gen AI performance. 38% have attempted to track changes in employee productivity. 34% have tried to track non-financial benefits. Only 6% are doing none of these types of things. So clearly there are experiments here, even if there aren't really best practices yet. My best guess is that we are going to see a continued period of experimentation around ROI measurement. I think that Deloitte is right to call out that there is a world in which the difficulty in measurement leads to a hindrance in organizations' abilities to actually scale these AI pilots. Clearly, we're already seeing some of that. However, I believe that the continued pressure on basically everyone from a director-level position up to have some sort of AI adoption strategy will actually produce an incredibly fertile set of experiments around AI ROI measurement that might get us to some of those best practices a little bit faster than we might anticipate. If you are interested in going deeper and checking out past reports, I will include a link to the overall webpage for this on Deloitte.com. For now, thanks to the team over there for preparing another interesting report. And thanks as always to you guys for listening or watching. Until next time, peace.